I'm here to talk about uh, jQuery being a Swiss Army knife and that being A-OK. -okay. This is, uh, I work at Boku. I obviously am pretty involved in the jQuery Foundation at this point. And, um, but I actually sometimes talk for more than 50, 50 minutes in a row, uh, five minutes in a row, and sometimes have something substantive to say. So anyhow, um, let's take, take a look at this guy. Now this guy says, I think that jQuery is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I'm sure that there's a lot of people who share this opinion, but not all of you are actually big fans of sandwiches. So he loves, loves jQuery. On the other hand, you've got this fellow. Now this guy, here's, here's what he thinks. He's like, well, I'd rather change my name to Quajiri than use jQuery. We've all encountered this guy because he's a holder of strong opinions. I mean, it's a stupid thing to do. Why would you want that to be your name? It means like, like booing for a train platform. Um, so the big fan of sandwiches, why does he love jQuery so much? It's because you know, jQuery changes the way you write JavaScript. Typically, it changes it in the fact that um, you go away from writing these just like mountains of global functions that sort of just pass, uh, that are just barely even programs. They're just kind of accidents. Um, to uh, actually starting to write some code where there's something meaningful going on because there's not, it's not just all full of garbage. And you're able to you know, do DOM traversal manipulation. And that's really simple, and you're able to write an app. Now, the holder of strong opinion is like unobtrusive JavaScript. Have you looked at this code? It's like, here's where the indentations start, and here's where the indentations end. And then this is the bottom of the function. Um, so they think it's jQuery apps are, can be hard to maintain. They can be really difficult to talk about, because when your code goes out to here and nothing has a name, it's really difficult to converse with your teammates or the strangers who are helping you on IRC. Again, that's disorganized. It's bloated. It's just too damn big. And it's slow. It's just too damn slow. Both of these unsubstantiated criticisms. Uh, but it's, it can be monolithic, both the apps and jQuery itself. So these people just hate jQuery. But I've seen even stronger opinions than that. So here, here's my problem. Here, no, here's my problem with tweets like this. And it's, it's I, you know, I obviously work on, the found, on jQuery at the foundation. I know people who are committing on all of the projects. And, and it's just that it's, I find that hard to believe, because this exists. So how could jQuery be the most pointless piece of shit ever created? Uh, <laughs> just say it. Um, but who here has seen this, this, old, uh, this old chestnut about like how to add two numbers together in JavaScript? Let's show of hands. A bunch of people are familiar with this. And a bunch of people haven't seen it. So all of you guys like get your laws in now. Like it's hilarious, right? Oh my god, you shouldn't use it. Adding numbers, negative downvote, the jQuery plugin, Jeff, jQuery is great. Okay, so people love bandying this around, and it actually sucks because it kind of sends the message that um, jQuery people who take jQuery seriously don't take JavaScript seriously. If you're into using jQuery, then obviously you think that the plus operator is stupid, um, uh, and that therefore, if you take jQuery seriously, you shouldn't be taken seriously as a developer, and neither should jQuery. So when you see this uh, ping go around, uh, delete it off your computer, because that's how you get things off the internet. So the long and short of this is that jQuery isn't a magic elixir. I'm sure a lot of folks have realized that by now. But on the other hand, jQuery isn't the enemy. And there's just so much vitriol and hatred and uh, misguided hatred, I think, toward people who use jQuery and uh, jQuery itself out there on the internet. The bottom line is that jQuery is just a tool. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I do this talk, I like to localize it so that people really get what I'm talking about. <laughs> so um, basically, I like to think of building a web app kind of like building a house. Obviously, not covered in these bullet points. There's like the fun part where you like build an entire house, and then there's like you spend days like patching one leak. 
Um, but the fun part is putting up the foundation. And when you're putting up the foundation, you have to use a lot of different tools. And it's important to put up the foundation and put up the walls before you start you know, painting or like picking out like which posters are going to go where. And jQuery, specifically, is a multi-tool. I know, I, I know that uh, there's com competition for this metaphor now at this conference, but uh, I hope I make the best one. Um, so how is jQuery like a multi-tool? Everyone need, can use it. Regardless of whether you're an expert or you're a complete beginner, there's something in it for you. And sometimes, when you're using you know, Leatherman or what have you, uh, that's what you does. It does the entire task. You have to cut something in half, you break out the knife, and you cut it in half. But other times, you need to paint something, and you need to open the paint can, and you use this, and then you paint. You don't actually, you're not like, oh, I use, the I use this to, to pry open the paint container. Now I will just proceed to apply paint with a knife. Um, but the moral of the story is you can't build an entire house with nothing but a multi-tool. You sort of can't. You can, but it's basically going to fall over at any moment. So I like to think of jQuery as a Swiss Army knife, because it does all these basic tasks and gives you a thing that lets you do it. You want to manipulate CSS? Probably you should be using classes, but you can do that. All your DOM stuff, all your defers, I don't need to list this. It's like 420 on day two of JQCon. I think it's pretty obvious. Um, and what it really boils down to in technical terms is that jQuery is just this constructor that has a bunch of static methods attached to it and it constructs jQuery objects. So this problem that people run into when they're starting with jQuery is that the dollar sign uh, notation doesn't even look like what they're used to as a function call. So they kind of just think it's this magical invocation in the style of like, which is dancing around a cauldron and you know, throwing in some lizard eyes and getting back some spans. Um, but in reality, when you look at it using the full written out jQuery notation, it actually looks like you're calling a function. And then what you're actually doing is constructing an object. And all you get back is this thing that makes it nice to iterate over DOM elements. And that is a huge advantage. And that's why I like to think of you know, jQuery as this basic tool is because it unifies the API of working with one element, working with multiple elements, working with new elements, working with elements that have been there for a long time, working with elements that you deleted and then you need back. They all have a predictable interface and you can call all these methods on them. You might not be able to find the index of an element that's not in the DOM, but so on and so forth. So I have this quote that actually says, you know, Think of jQuery objects as a basic building block of your application. And this is from a really, really smart programmer. Um, <laughs> but where this really starts to have repercussions is when you start to think about dry. Who's here familiar with dry? You know, don't repeat yourself. Obviously, the op opposite of dry is wet, which is write everything twice or more. And to me, you know, the, obviously, the obvious canonical thing about dry is you, know, you see a function where like 95% of the characters are the same, but then it's like, you know, you slide item one, slide item two, slide item three, and then you have like 17 of those written out, and it's like, hey, you know about like loops, right? Um, but in reality, I like to avoid doing actions twice, and calling jQuery to query the DOM is an action. So, the first three code examples here kind of look silly outside of the context of you know, an if or being assigned to a variable, because why would you do that? Why would you just be like, hey, parse this string into an object, peace, out, later? Or like, hey, anyone want a regex? Cool, because I, I, I just lost one. I made one, and I lost it. So <laughs> um, what you do when you're writing code is you <laughs> build things, and then you save them and use them. Um, and when people start off with jQuery, this is just like they completely, completely forget this. And they start to almost use the DOM as a database. Because 
damn, these selectors are so easy that I can just concatenate a bunch of them together and it's just like select from DOM where ID equals blah, 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 and you know, data bear cubs equals cutest. Um, and that's a horrible way to write apps. Um, so here is kind of an example of what I'm talking about, one of these uh, apps. So here we have this really useful, really, really useful, realistic, real-world JavaScript application. Um, obviously, you know, most production websites are nothing more than cute animals scrolling by. So what, oh, come on, JS Bin, don't do me like that. Don't do me like that, JS Bin. Um, but you see what I'm talking about. It's inside of event handlers, you're going back and querying the whole DOM. And then there's really no beginning or middle or end to this code. It's just kind of like, blammo! It happened. So I suggest that you pretty much always cache any jQuery selection you make, because the chances are you're probably going to use it or you're going to use something that is a subset of it later in your application. And you can do this by just you know, saving a selection and then doing actions on it afterwards. The way the chaining works is that as you chain, you're still getting this, um, a reference back. So you can set something up, set up some handlers on it, call some methods on it, and still save the reference out. And then, even if it's just as simple as like wrapping this inside of a click handler, don't do it twice. Just don't do it twice. Just don't do it twice. Please. Um, so when you take this philosophy, what does your code start to look like? Now, I'm not saying this is the greatest structured program in the world, but it's barely even a program. But even then, just by naming variables, we have gained a, an immense amount of ability to converse about this with someone who we're working on. You know, we, whoopsie, hey now. I'm giving away all my secrets right now. Refresh that. Anyone know any good jokes? Because I know one. I know one about a horse. <laughs> um, I just repressed refresh. That was a dumb idea. Uh, hold on a sec. Oh, that was that was probably the worst thing I could have done right there. Um, give me a quick second. I'm gonna go. Pull up these slides. <laughs> oh, wait, I have a fun one. Let's get out of this. Oh, man. You know what's happening right now? Who wants to guess how much RAM I have free as a percentage of available RAM? I'll give you a hint. It starts with Z. <laughs> oh, man. Huh? Try what? Okay. Someone want to just give me their laptop? Huh? Oh, it's running on localhost. Oh, I, I have it. I have it. I have it. Um, so everyone talk to your neighbor, shake hands. Uh, you know, just do some icebreakers here early in the conference and uh, get to know each other while I deal with my own ineptitude. Da, 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 da. Get them up, move them out, move them out, move them out. Displays, arrangement, mirror displays. Da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Damn. So, oh, one thing we do get to get here is this is the joke I did in uh, Britain, is when I showed the tool thing. Da -da -da. I showed Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, no, wait, I uploaded this code already. Hey, that's my slide link. Um, <laughs> so, if that wasn't intensely awkward, I, don't, I think you haven't watched 
me talk for the rest of the, present, the, rest of the conference. Um, and we are back. So we have variables that are named. And then inside of our click handlers, we go through and reference the collections that we started off at the beginning. And then when we want to call methods on the cycle plugin, it's like, oh, let's go to the cycle plugin that is associated with the s slideshow of animals that are active in the summer, or the same thing for the winter. And the fact is, you can save jQuery objects anywhere. Um, obviously, you can just you know, do a variable, or you can save it as a reference, as a uh, property of an object. And when you start to look at uh, Backbone or so on and so forth, that's really how things start to work. Because the jQuery object is just this interface between your application and the DOM. And the objects that you construct around it is your application. And yeah, there's this big thing that people always talk about. Because when you hear about caching selectors, it's all about performance. Because oh my god, selectors are so slow. In reality, only the checkbox selector is slow. There's a, a bunch of really bad selectors. But it's not about only speed. It's about this whole thing of communication. And here's another quote from another great programmer I know. Pew! So jQuery is JavaScript, but so is JavaScript. So um, don't waste your time looking for the jQuery way to do things. Uh, I've seen people literally come in and be like, you know, they do ask these questions that appear on Stack Overflow, so maybe the re reputation is well earned. But you should know, if you ever have this question of, how do I find the jQuery equivalent, you don't need to find it. And what happens in these apps, like, you know, if we had, imagine that original cycle uh, demo where, um, you know, it actually was the size of a real web app. It starts to just turn into this choose-your-own-adventure story about the DOM. There's just anonymous collections, which are just jQuery collections that you didn't save anywhere, and you're just going back and forth and querying the DOM, and there's no state really anywhere aside from that you know that there are variables that have it sort of somewhere. And this is where I say the DOM is not your application. It's just the view layer. It is just the view. So in other words, you want to try and put up the walls of your house, which is to say, structure your application with objects, whether you're using MVC frameworks like Backbone and so forth and so forth, or just building simple objects and pushing jQuery down a level. So you're like, all right, I buy that. jQuery is just a build. These are just building blocks. It's pretty straightforward. But I'm building something a little bit bigger than a house. I, I can't. I can't use. I need to build fast. So when I went to London the first time a long time ago, I saw this. You guys know what's happening here? They are building a building using container ships. Uh, it's a lot faster way to build hotels or structures like that because you have these prefab things you can put together to build real quick, real fast. And this, to me, is where Backbone and Angular and Can and uh, the whole kit and caboodle and of friends let you focus on actually building an application, on building the hotel, versus you know, like manufacturing sheetrock, which is kind of, uh, to my mind, where jQuery kind of fits in. So the thing is, not only do I think of jQuery as a Swiss Army knife, I kind of think of it as a Swiss Army knife with a Swiss Army knife attached to it. <laughs> because you know, if you saw me spiel yesterday, um, I think that the utility of jQuery goes far beyond you know, being a basic building block to give you a sweet syntax for iterating over collections of DOM elements. Um, jQuery starts to, has started to become like a lingua franca between web developers because even if what the person is using isn't actually jQuery, it's just like they wrote a wrapper where it's uh, document get element by ID, or it's just a wrapper around query selector all, this idea that the dollar is query the DOM and go do something, that's something we can all sort of talk about. It's also an incredibly, incredibly dev uh, useful device for learning how to program, getting involved in open source, 
and I'm going to talk about all these. So for me, I was a theater major. I know, it's shocking. Um, <laughs> and I knew HTML and CSS. I learned it like I learned how to make like my first blog when I was a little kid and uh, of 10 years old or so. And um, I, JavaScript just wasn't clicking for me. I, I was like, what is an object? And then I got on IRC, and I found jQuery, and sort of the light like coughed and wheezed and flickered a little bit, and then came on full force, like crazy. Um, and I'm not the only person who this has happened to. Uh, there's an awesome blog post by Oscar Godson called jQuery Made Me a Programmer. I'm sure I can get people to raise their hands and agree, because I am raising my hand and agree that this happened. Anybody? Congratulations. Um, so I can't stand this kind of bullshit. Um, uh, so GNOME decided that they're going to let people write uh, desktop apps uh, for, in Linux. So that's great. I think I just betrayed everything I don't know about Linux. Um, but oh my god, what an awful, awful thing. Someone might want to try and write something that they don't know how to do. How terrible. Um, and when I see this kind of thing, and it's a really common sentiment out in the world, um, you know, it's like worrying that someone is going to say something dumb. So God forbid, let's just not teach them English. Um, jQuery has a, making websites is kind of a big deal nowadays. And it's going to end, naturally has to be a lot of people's first exposure to programming. If jQuery is a tool that makes that even easier, then yeah, there's going to be a mountain of shitty code out there. Uh, and you probably will never have to maintain it. But what's important is the person who writes the shittier code writes like slightly less shitty code, and then like downright mediocre code, and then like mediocre with a positive connotation, you know, the way people use it. And then like they start to write good code. It is a journey. Um, and also, Making fun, no one came out of the womb, you know, like crying, screaming, wanting milk, and also like knowing awesome performance patterns for writing JavaScript applications. So mocking people who don't know that before you is really mean and it's really stupid. And I think it's really great that we're able to have people who have come up from jQuery and become, go into, you know, Oh, hey, JavaScript. Oh, hey, Node.js. And all of a sudden, they're like writing servers. Or you know, there's a million different paths you can go on. And also, you can do a lot of damage with a pocket knife. Like, no one's ever like, oh, hey, corkscrew. You know what? Eyeball. <laughs> I could open this bottle of wine, but I, you know, I like a real rich, bloody red. Uh, <laughs> it's generally not the knife's fault. Occasionally, it's the knife's fault, and that's when you have uh, bug trackers or product recalls. Um, but usually, you do something dumb with a tool, it's on you. And then, um, where this has also been great is that we have a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, I talked yesterday at length about how we have tried to open source everything. Because learning how to do all this open source stuff can be kind of scary. It can be kind of hard, because you have to do something that you don't know how to do in order to do something that you do know how to do, which is you know, write code, or write markup, write styles, make things look better, make things run faster. Um, and then you also have to learn all this committing crap on the side, where like Vim pops up for the first time, and you're just like, Rebecca, what is this? Thing, and she's just like, type colon WQ, and everything will be OK. <laughs> so we put together contribute.jQuery.org, and we want to, like I said, bring people in. And because there's lots and lots and lots of things to do, and if the way that someone learns how to just like, oh, this is how I deal with the merge conflict, comes uh, while they're working on an open source project where we're happy to like, say, like, hey, it's not a big deal. Just you know, look, at, look for the, there's going to be a lot of carrots. Make it so there's no more carrots, and uh, then commit it again. Um, that's good, because then they can take that back um, to their companies and do great work. Um, also, uh, this is absurd. Raise your hand if you've never, ever gotten a single jQuery plugin to ever work. 
That's one. That's exact. That's the exact outcome I was hoping for. So I don't think it's a shit community. I think we had a really, really good time here the last couple days. We had like little miniature cakes together and uh, invented a whole on currency. So jQuery is going on every single day, um, and what? And we're, we were here, uh, the board and the team, um, Tuesday and Wednesday meeting. And having relationships that go beyond just writing code end up helping the coding process, too. Because when your entire relationship with someone is not just critiquing their JavaScript, but actually consists of you know, like having a lobster together and like talking about the first time you eat a lobster together, or um, that's what I did this one time I met like a really old IRC friend of mine. We just drank, we ate a lobster and a steak and drank a bottle of red wine. Um, and that really helps you not have like awful headbutting arguments because you have a fully formed person that you're working with, not just a handle, not just someone like arguing with you on GitHub. And for us, investing in the community helps jQuery uh, keep going and keep growing. Uh, we obviously have jQuery conference. We did our first developer summit last year. I think we're going to do another one later this year. Uh, the developer summit is just two days of people working on different parts of jQuery. We get you set up, and we give you a team, and then we just plow through GitHub issues. And if you like precipitous drops on bug tracker charts, then you should come to the next dev summit. And also, things are a lot less murky. We're not like a dark, shadowy room uh, where we make decisions. Uh, anyone can join the jQuery team by just working on jQuery for a while. And then you're, you, know, you get to come. You get a different color on your badge. Um, you get to have dinner. It's really delicious. You get to come to the conference for free. It's real nice. Um, but, and all you have to do is show some commitment and make, an, make a contribution. And ultimately, this lifts all of us up. Because you know, someone gets really involved in open source, and then they start, their entire exposure changes, and they start meeting lots of people. And then they're able to bring that back to work. And maybe some of those people end up getting involved in open source, but maybe, other, maybe it just like trickles back, and someone just learns about like interactive, re uh, interactive uh, rebasing and uh, staging commits in Git. And that person ends up like not doing a million merge conflicts every week. It has benefits for everyone. Um, we also work on the web uh, together. And so we're, we've, I've gotten really involved in standards work since we started the jQuery Foundation, which is really awesome to kind of be able to bring the developer voice into TC39 and tag um, and to be able to talk about pointer events. Instead of like solving bugs and bitching about how the specs should have been better, we're able to be in that process. And all it took was us saying, hey, we'd like to be part of the process. And like I said, bringing the web developer's perspective is really, really important. So I'd like to just wrap up with a meaningful concluding quote. And you know, from an important person. And um, thank you all for listening. <laughs> um, I also want to <laughs> wanted to do a brief treatise on the size of jQuery, because uh, that's always a hot button issue, and I'm sure someone's wanting to ask. Um, first of all, uh, you guys know about JPEGs? They're like a lot of kilobytes, too. And no one's ever like, oh, man, we've got to get these JPEGs off our website. Even one JPEG is just awful when you could use, like, ZeptoPeg or whatever. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, um, yes, there's parse time. But like, when you think about all that it offers you in terms of this fluid API, I see all these posts. I'm, there's a bunch of posts going around. And it's like. Uh, native equivalents of jQuery methods. And they're all like different. And like, obviously, they're all different, but there's, and then that's the whole reason that jQuery exists, is because sometimes you want to, sometimes it's, you assign a property, other times it's a method call. Uh, and then there's that one little edge case that, the, that jQuery solves that 90% of the time you won't run into, and then the 1% of the time that, 
oh, bad math, the 10% of the time that you run into it, you spend all this time debugging it, and then you're like, oh, man, I could have just used jQuery. Uh, that is a bad mistake. Um, and then, obviously, there's a lot of other ways to save time and performance on your app than trying to shave bytes off of jQuery. First of all, uh, there's the CDN, but the CDN isn't the panacea it's often made out to be. Uh, often just bundling your third-party dependencies and caching the hell out of them is a great way to uh, make that problem into a non-problem. Um, and then um, you just don't fuck up. No, I lost my train of thought. Um, ultimately, it's just not that big of a price to pay, I think. And I think that also, JavaScript performance is rarely the bottleneck. That's the other important thing. People are like, man, you can only run this ID selection 340,000 times a second. Oh. We need to do better. <laughs> oh, damn. Only 340,000 times a second. Yeah, there are parts of your app where you're going to have really tight loops and you're going to like make sure you need to optimize the hell out of them. Most of your app isn't that, and like maybe you should take out a box shadow first. Uh, with that said, um, I will take questions uh, and hope that my computer's back to uh, a live state. Nothing. Nothing? Well, then let's give another round of applause. <laughs>